Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 3 vs 3 on Volcano and today I'm going to be using Territorial Commando Sud which is the second of two new divisions available in the new Messina update for Warno. So let's have a quick look at what's going down here. At the front I have four of these Jaeger Aufklader, we've seen those plenty times before. And then I have two of the new AMX-10 RCs. These are speedy tanks, which have the maximum road speed of 108 kilometers per hour. But imagine having that with a main gun. Very, very maneuverable units. You only get six of them, however, in this division. And then we have a green archer. This is an exceptional recon ground unit because it's using radar there. And I've also got a gazelle cannon. Furthermore, we've got some of these Super Pumas, which are going to be carrying some of the new French infantry, the Aeromobiles. These guys have a bunch of FAMAS, a nice machine gun, and then the Apalas, which is a fantastic AT weapon. Following up all of those, I have some of the P4 Milans. The P4 Milan Jeeps have the Milan 2 weapon system and are really strong uh, for killing tanks at range. They do do decent amount of damage to heavy tanks in the front armor due to the 24 penetration. So definitely a good vehicle, especially for the cheap price of 35 points. And I've got three of these Cannon and Jagdpanzers as well. These Cannon and Jagdpanzers, they are nice, cheap, expendable armor. 35 points, 13 penetration, great for killing off sort of medium armor. My Super Pumas have landed and they're going to be dropping off my French infantry and then I'm going to be immediately selling these. With the cost of the Aeromobile plus the Super Puma it's 110 points and the Super Puma is like half the cost of the combined unit so if you sell two of the Super Pumas it allows you to buy in another one so it's really important that you sell these and bring in more reinforcements once you do. So they're just going to be flying off the edge of the map there. Uh, but I do get a pretty good position here early on in the center of the map. This map is actually really cool. This is one of the newer maps, Volcano. It has this sort of big forest ring in the center, which is on some elevated ground. And then either side are these sort of valleys, I guess, uh, with more open ground terrain. There is quite an open area in the center as well. And I'm going to have to make good use of my HGMs here to control that. Because much like the KDA Berserk Airfoot on the pack side of things, this division also doesn't have much to deal with heavy armor at range. So you're very reliant on your eight gems. And so playing defensively across open ground is usually the play style you're going to be going for. And then using the flanks where you have cover to push up. So in this case, moving forwards with the Erlumber Bills and the Jäger Aftkader on the right hand side. And on the left, more Jäger Aftkader here with the AMX-10 RC. I'm going to be bumping into a bunch of these BRDM early on. I'm going to be up against the 39th guards in this matchup. My opponent here going to be YOLOing his transports forwards. These don't have any infantry in them. Otherwise they have like a little soldier icon next to the icon of the vehicle. But it is going to be using up a lot of my Ada gems killing all of these. <laughs> the UAZs, I think these are worth so, sort of moving forwards. Especially in the case where you want to use up enemy Ada gems. But the BTR 60 PBs, I feel like they were a bit wasted here. Because the BTR 60 PBs are actually pretty good fire support for your infantry. So keeping them there at close range is pretty nice. <laughs> this one really lucky not to get hit by those HGMs there as I just about run out. Now since I was using up a lot of ammunition, I am going to be bringing in one of my supply vehicles. So that's on its way. And I've also got some more reinforcements, some more Super Pumas on their way with the Aeromobiles just to bulk up this force of infantry that's moving through the trees. But my initial engagement here, I'm relatively happy with. I've got a really decent position along this tree line and I prevented that push across the open. Now I'm just kind of focusing on pushing the infantry up the flanks and I'm going to be looking for the command vehicle in Hotel. I've also decided to bring up a bunch of these bofers, as you can see. The Bofors are pretty interesting units. They have the 40mm gun, 
which fires in sort of like salvos of like three or I mean it says six on the card but I'm or eight on the card but I'm pretty sure it's less than that and then it takes a little while to reload then it fires again they are they're okay for dealing with sort of helicopters in a pinch not really good for shooting down aircraft unless you have a bunch of them all in the same place and the aircraft fires it flies over the top but yeah they're mainly there for helicopter defense and they're going to be static that's another thing that you do have to deal with with territorial commander suit is they don't really have much in the way of maneuverable aa uh, they have the rolands roland twos and roland threes but they are quite expensive so they're not really something you're going to want to rely on too much and the other problem with rolands is they fire two missiles and then they have to reload which means that you end up in a position where you're just not firing fast enough to shoot down the helicopters that are attacking you because our cannon going to be getting on target are these 30 mils they're really not that strong in this case you're going to see it kill off the transport but the trouble with the 30 mil on these gazelle cannons is they're just not very accurate they just don't hit very often be more reliant on my hgms here to kill these gas trucks <laughs> well, i do manage to finish all of those off in the end in the in Wargamer Dragon, the Gazelle cannons were like super strong. Uh, but yeah, here, not as strong. Although in large numbers can overwhelm certain targets. And I am going to be bringing up some more here because, as I said, I am going to need more if they're going to be useful. Now just look at the graphics. Looks beautiful as we zoom in here, seeing all of the Gazelles moving forwards over the trees. Lovely stuff. The Jaeger Alfred are moving to the edge here. Going to be spotting a couple of the Bruces. Definitely going to be preventing me from using any aircraft for the time being. Now we have an Mi-24. Going to be coming over on the left-hand side to engage my Gazelle cannon. Uses a couple of its missiles to take it down. And what I decide to do is try and rush it with my own gazelle <laughs> cannons that are coming up to reinforce. I just used up its third missile. So if it fires its fourth and doesn't shoot down my helicopter, then I should be fine. But as I move over the ridge here, I start getting shot by the infantry and this BTR. So I decide to fall back, and so does he with the MI-24V. So if you can get these on target and start shooting, over time they will be accurate enough to do the damage, so that's okay. Uh, I do manage to pick off a Barusa here. That was a nice shot by the Jaeger. I was trying to get it back to kill that, but then the second shot was out of range, so I just kind of gave up on that idea as I continue to move them back to be resupplied and fixed up. Now the Jaeger, I've kind of finding some Modestrauki on the road here, but he's brought up a lot of extra troops. Didn't really have time to kill off the BTR 60PB because on this right hand side I did destroy a BTR in this tree line which was capturing the flag but he did already bring up a second one so he's going to be able to recap that almost immediately which is unfortunate. But yeah, If the Jaeger Alfklada had got the shot onto the command here then we would have decapped this sector for a while. And this middle sector, super hard to cap. There, is, there was no way at this point in time that I was going to be able to get a command in here because it is so open. The only cover you have are these tree lines. And if there's any form of recon whatsoever, you're going to see anything in here. And there's a conkers here. I know there's probably like a conkers on the right hand side. So yeah, no chance of getting a vehicle in there to capture it. Maybe an infantry squad could have snuck in. But I think the only infantry command that I had in the deck were the Green Beret uh, leaders. And in the meantime, I'm going to be moving up with the AMX-10s to take out the Belusa. But having a hard time getting on target. The issue I was having was these were firing, kept firing on the move, trying to chase the Belusa. And they only have a 10% <laughs> accuracy on the move. And I end up having one of them destroyed by the Conkers. So that was unfortunate. Anyway, yeah, get half out of there. 
managing to kill one of the BTR 60 BBs. And I'm also looking now for the rocket into the other Barusa on the left hand side because I'm considering that if I can take care of the rest of these AA pieces, then I can start to use my Air Force, which is something that this division does start to rely on quite a bit when it comes to heavier armor. But just in general, they do have some like cheap bombers in the form of like the F-104s, I think they are. And those would be great in this sort of situation for pushing up, but I'm not going to suicide them into this Barusa, so that's why I wasn't using them just yet. Now, I decided to use the M48A2s here. The reason I brought these in was because I was kind of convinced at the time that these Conkers would be low on ammo, but yeah, it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> and... Uh, I do lose three of them pretty much for free there. These aren't cheap either, 75 points a pop. But my Jaeger Avgar, at least, managing to take out the BTR 60 PBK here as it moves forwards with the infantry. So I do actually end up decapping uh, this sector for a little while. But it doesn't matter in terms of points because I believe there was a sector elsewhere that we weren't controlling. And also I'm not controlling this one in the center, so that doesn't help either. Slowly but surely, uh, the Jaeger Aftrader here are getting overrun, bumping into enemy after enemy. They can only last so long if they're not getting resupplied. I did want to move my Gazelle Cannons here forwards to help deal with the Conkers, but I can't do that until I deal with the Brusa. So I managed to take out one of the Brusas. That's going to allow my Gazelle Cannons to come forwards and engage the Conkers. And then I'm going to be moving the Cannon and Jagdpanzers down to try and engage the second Brusa. And if I can take out all of the Brusas, then... These helicopters are going to have a field day, and also I'm going to be able to bring in some aircraft. Unfortunately, the Conkers is going to be able to kill off another one of my AMX-10s here. That was kind of sad. The Gazelle cannons firing away. Really kind of suffering to get on target there at long range. It's because of the 20% accuracy statistic, plus the 5% on the move. And it's going to be really hard for me now to take out the Barusa because I actually moved over to the other side. So it's going to absolutely decimate my helicopters here. Two of them going down. The third one going to be able to get away. Yeah, not ideal. Going to be able to catch out a couple of BTR-60 PBs on the left-hand side here. As the AMX-10 engages that. Also the P4 Milan coming in there with the shot, but unfortunately missing. That was the uh, M48 engaging it. it. Does manage to kill off that squad as well. This can Jagdpanzer taking out the BMP3. The BMP3s were actually doing quite a lot of damage to these because they only have three front armor, which means the auto cannon of the BMP3 can chip those over time. And auto cannons at the moment are pretty strong, so that was definitely an issue. This M48. Lucky to be alive as that HGM misses. But I'm currently just charging forwards to try and kill this produce. I just really want to get rid of it so I can start using my aircraft. I could have probably opted to overwhelm the Barusa with my aircraft. Like I could have just brought in lots of bombers, a couple of cluster bombers or something, and then just killed it. Uh, that probably could have worked, but I opted to go for the tank shots. And the cannon and the Jagdpans are kind of letting me down there by missing. Gazelle Hot, looking for the Hot 2 onto the BRDM, but it did start taking a lot of damage, so I ended up pulling it back. And this thing doesn't have any motion stat. It has to basically be still in order to fire. It's not a very good ATGM uh, helicopter, because it has to be static in order to track its missile. I'm just going to be flying that round away from the Brusa and then landing it next to the supply to get that fixed up. Meanwhile, on the left, the Modestrauki BMP managed to kill off two of my transports before I unloaded, which was really bad on my part. But I managed to get the other two pioneers out, and with their hand flambatrons, I'm able to engage the Modestrauki here nicely and kill them off very quick indeed. I've got a couple of uh, AMX 10 RCs coming up to help support this. Uh, the BTR-60, this is the reason that the, the BTR-60 should never really be suicided, because in this situation, this Pioneer has nothing that it can kill this BTR-60PB with. 
And so the BTR60BB is just chipping this really, really quickly. And I brought over the AMX10s to engage the BTR here, but I wasn't able to get there in time. So it just shows how effective those can be. But here come my Jaegers. And I do have the m 13s with the MG3s now to help us out. Charging forwards there against the Sapati RPO. Also, in the meantime, over on the right-hand side here, you can see that I've moved up all these aeromobiles. These are moved into positions. This one in particular is in a great position because it can actually fire towards this road because it has the 885-meter range Apalas. Now, here as well, the Cannon and Jagdpanzer looking for the engagement with the BMP-2s. Slowly but surely, just going to be popping in and out of cover there, trying to take out some of those before they get into cover. Another unit going down there to the automobile. The BMP-2s at close range, still doing plenty of damage. So my automobile here is actually out of ammo, which is why I'm running it away. And then the Jaeger Alcatraz is going to be moving up there with the Panzerfaust. Just one thing that's bad about the automobile is they only get four shots with their AT. Whereas the Panzerfaust gets six, so it's a little bit better in terms of like supply economy, but well, I should have ideally had a supply with these Aeromobile because they are in such good positions for sniping these roads. And you can see that this one's already used up its, its rockets there in order to kill these transports and cut off the reinforcements to the right hand side. But now I've got to deal with all the Motostrauki here, because there's a bunch of Motostrauki. There's also the BMPs that I'm trying to kill off with the Jäger Aufklader. I'm just trying to push through on the left-hand side again, up against the Motostrauki. MX-10's able to get a few cheeky shots in here. BMP-2 going to go down. These AMX 10s are just so good at taking out these APCs because of the 17 penetration. I'm going to be looking for the BMP 3 here, but unfortunately, the HGM that it has hits me first before I even get close. Then, going to be able to repay in kind. First shot taking it down to 2 health, second shot finishing the job. Meanwhile, in the trees, the Jaegers getting the better of the Modestrauki. And over on the right-hand side, I'm running away with my Aeromobiles here so that I can consolidate and just outnumber them. Because one-on-one, -on -one, the Aeromobiles aren't actually that much stronger than the uh, Modestrauki. We've got Kazal Cannon moving over there to help support the infantry. My M48 is going to find the vehicle over there. The Gazelle also fired from back here. Yeah, this game, I feel like, really showed how this deck plays and where it struggles. Because you can see that I'm really not able to push across the open. And when I did try and push across the open with the M48s, I just didn't really have the front armor to make it happen. They all got just killed by H gems and stuff. Here, clumping up my infantry so that I can get local superiority onto each individual squad. And we're doing a reasonably good job. But I definitely should have had a supply up there with those because that would have made a huge difference. The MP3 getting shots onto the Gazelle cannon. That's going to force me to pull that back. And now I'm trying to overwhelm another squad of Modestrauki in the cover here. I'm going to be losing one of the Jaegers. One thing that was definitely helping Bender here with the engagement was that he was bringing his Motostrauki in at the 2-vet, which is a big help for sure. SU-24 going to be going down. It did try and drop some bombs onto my infantry, and I believe it helped take out one of the aeromobiles. But now I'm having trouble with these helicopters. The MI-24s chasing and spraying down my infantry. I'm forced to bring in the F-4Fs. I'm trying to zoom in on the F4F as it comes in to strafe these. My first one fails to actually get the kill there, which was unfortunate. 
And the second one does the job, as requested. But now I'm in a bit of a weird predicament because the enemy bring in a MiG, which is going to get on the back of my F4F, and the F4F is also going to get shot at by the Barusa. So that's going to get shot down, and since this one also ended up taking some damage, I'm going to have to retreat that for the time being, and I still have a helicopter here that's going to be able to harass my infantry. All the while, I am building up a little bit of a push here, so I've brought in some more of these M48s. I've got some Jaegers, and the plan was to have the Jaegers run across the open and attack uh, towards this hotel objective, and then have the M48s provide fire support as I reveal the enemy units. And if there were any HGMs that started firing, then the Jaegers would be able to engage those as well. That was kind of the plan. I've also got more of the Jaegers in the M113s moving over to the left-hand side, uh, to push through the cover there. At the moment we're losing to the plus two uh, because Charlie's contested and we don't really have much control over the right-hand side at the moment. Now, this is one thing that I probably should have done earlier on. Like It's quite obvious where the enemy command is here. So bringing in like just a cluster plane or a bomber to suicide onto that command would have probably been a good idea to make sure that they weren't um, getting like the two tick on us. For the time being. But then there's going to be investing into more helicopters and the 39th guard certainly gets a lot of them. Due to the hill not really able to get a gun run there which meant that I pretty much got no damage onto the MI-24 with that F4F. Trying to micro it round in order to get another runoff. And I thought it was going to come in for another shot but then it just flew over the top. Uh, which is unfortunate, and then it took damage from the Burusa, so I'm not really going to be able to commit for that. And I'm going to end up having to tell that to leave, and all the while the MI-24s are just coming in and rocketing all of my cannon and Jagdpanzers to death. Since they don't have much armor, it's easy kills for these helicopters. F4F coming in there for a nice run does manage to kill one of them, but is going to go down to the Bedusa. And trading like the F4F for a helicopter is kind of worth it at the moment. It's kind of weird. I'm not a massive fan of it, but basically uh, these F4Fs are probably like 140, 150 points. And what that means is I can suicide into these like 130 point helicopters, or the other one that I actually took down before that was 220 points and get kind of like a profit from it. And since these are kind of low on availability, shooting them down is a pretty big deal. But my iHawk here, my static iHawk, able to shoot down one of those helicopters as well, so that definitely helped and it kind of opened the way for my M48s to push forwards. Meanwhile, Pioneers on the left-hand side are going to be trying to deal with the Magistralki, but are under, under fire from the BMP-2. They don't have any AT to deal with that, so the M48 is going to have to try and push up there and help out. As I start to push forwards, the Magistralki do come out to play, and they're going to be engaging my Jaegers in the open, but this is exactly what I was kind of hoping. It allows my M48s to sit at distance and just smack the enemy with their HE shells with the Bedusa also getting involved. That's going <laughs> to demolish one of the squads very quickly indeed. Do you manage to kill it though? And that's... Uh, I'm very happy with that. The other nice thing about these M48s is if they do get into range with the machine gun, they also start doing a lot of damage because the MG3 is pretty strong. So that's a good successful push, and with the infantry kind of dealt with on this side of the sector, I'm going to be able to put some effort into capturing this center objective. So I've got an Iltis Furongs that's going to be moving up and trying to hide in this tree line in order to capture the point, and therefore cancel out this plus two that the enemy have on us at the moment. MI-24V still causing problems though, does have the Kokon missile which is able to kill off my M48s quite easily if it hits. Whenever I do this my Kokon would never hit but his was being reasonably accurate. Already killed one of the M48s of course. 
There's going to be a second going down. Should have really been rushing these into the cover sooner. I do it afterwards, as you can see here. I should have done that much sooner. I've got the IHawk actually moving up to try and get into a position where we can shoot that down. But at the moment, no such luck. Because the range against helicopters is 2,600. I think it was just out of line of sight. So I bring in the F4F anyway. And we're going to be able to finish off that last helicopter, which is great. Eltis Philongs manages to get into the objective. And that's going to be able to capture that for us. But now I'm having to deal with a counterattack of T-62s. So I'm going to leave it up to my P4 Milan trucks to break them down. These P-40 Milans do have 2,473 meters of range. The T-62s have 2,120 meters of range. So I am kind of playing on 300 meters range here, which is really not that far, honestly, to try and get these kills. But if I can land shots every time, then that is fantastic. Also, the M-48 going to be shooting across there, which is really, really nice. Both of those ones missing. Classic. And then M48 going to end up going down to the T62s that moved up on the right hand side. Now that T62 ends up smoking itself so I'm just going to take the opportunity to fall back with the P4 Milans and get them resupplied with more to gems. I've also got a couple more IHawks on the way so I don't have to deal with more helicopters and also they're going to be great for shooting down enemy aircraft. There's poor Jäger Avkala got caught in a really bad predicament. I put them on return fire. But they end up getting spotted. And I do get a nice side shot into the T-62 with the Jäger Avkala, but yeah, as soon as they're spotted, they're dead. And I knew that, which is why I put them on return fire in the first place. But yeah, when the T-62s got too close, it was over. The P-4 Milan's going to be firing away now. I'll just kind of move them forwards to engage the T-62s again. This time around, we're going to be letting them get a little bit too close, and that T-62 is going to kill one of my P-4s. And the IHawk here is vulnerable to those tanks, and it's going to get taken out. It's interesting how they've like programmed these sort of support weapons now, because in Still Division, like a unit like that would probably just take a little bit of damage, like you know, two health or three health from a hit, rather than just be killed in one shot. But in this game, t uh, tanks can kind of just one-shot those, which is, I think, kind of cool, to be honest. But artillery going to be coming in here as well and taking out another one of my hawks. That one getting destroyed as well, unfortunately. With all that done, the M113 is going to be cleaning up some Sapati Apio here with their MG3s. The Sapati Apio can't do anything against these armored targets, so easy to run them down. And now the egg is going to be moving up to try and clean up the BTR-60s that are in position here. In order to deal with these T-62s range without having to have something on the ground that the T-62s can fire at, I opted to bring in the Gazelle Hots. Of course, still vulnerable to enemy AA, but we have killed a lot of producers, so I'm not too worried about that being a problem. I'm also starting to build up a little bit of a push here on the right hand side. You see I've got the Green Beret leader, I've got some Jaegers, I've got some Aeronomobiles, I've got some more units coming in like Pioneer with the flame, flame, Pioneer Flam. I mean these have the Hand Flambatron, so not really flamethrower infantry. But uh, then they have the Jaeger and another Aeronomobile on the way to help there. So just building up like another infantry force that I can push up here and then I'm going to have a leader with me this time which is going to be able to neutralize this sector. Meanwhile on the left, Jaeger's moving up with their G3s and engaging the Mostrauki. This one moves, ends up running forwards and reveals a ton of enemies here. And infantry engagements are very much about like local superiority in numbers. And he had way more than I did, so I'm going to be trying to do a runner. Unfortunately, running away from combat in this game is kind of difficult. Instead of vision, you just press R and you'd like fall back. But uh, because you get your cohesion lowered, it means your s movement is slowed, and therefore chasing units always catch up if you're if you've already been in combat. 
the idea is to n basically know that you're going to lose before you start losing and run away before your cohesion gets too low. But Ata Gem's doing quite a good job here. But with these transports being like forced forwards, they are using up a lot of my Ata Gems that I'd otherwise like to use on the T62s. This T62 on the right hand side was really sticking around for a very long time. I kept missing it with all of my H gems. <laughs> Just see that. It should should have been dead a long time ago. The Jaegers, their transports are dead. They're going to try and push forwards onto the Motostraki regardless. Like absolute chads. Meanwhile, Gazelle's going to land on the road in order to resupply from the supply truck there. There are still a bunch more T-62s I've got to deal with on the left side. But with my infantry arriving here on the right, it's time to start moving up. I also decided to bring in the FRP Roland 3 so that I don't have to worry about any enemy helicopters. Although I think at this point I probably already shot them all down because he had two of the AA MI-24s I believe and then like a rocket one and then an AT one. And so that would have been like three cards worth that shot down. And the good, the MiG did come in for the bombing strike there, cleaned up the remaining Jaegers that were in the open. I end up shooting that down, of course, as I do have quite a lot of AA in position now. But the Gazelle's going to be moving up now, looking for the shots onto the T-62s. A mistake on my part was that I didn't really move these close enough to the T-62s in order to track them well. So like you can see I'm right clicking these T62s. But if you have t the, your units on like defensive mode or have like the defensive mode activated so that they automatically retreat, they're always going to do what his unit did just there. He might have been microing that himself honestly. But anytime they are moving away and I have to move my gazelle closer, I lose track on the hot two because they don't have any like motion uh, like stabilizer basically. Going to be engaging that one and managed to pick one off at least, which is good. And then, meanwhile, on the left, the Jaegers are dealing with all of the Modestrauki that were pushing through on that side. We're slowly but surely making ground here. And as soon as the Green Beret leader gets into the sector, we're going to be able to get our plus two going. So, that was good. Also, any infantry here that was getting low, I have the supply right behind them, so going to be able to top them up almost immediately. And they've got another unit on the way already. I also had a couple of these cannon and Jagdpanzers heading over here, but those were moving over to the right-hand side to help support this push. Now, I finally decide to get rid of this command. I felt like it was about time that we got our plus two pack. I suppose nobody else did this sooner though. <laughs> yeah, the plan was to just bomb and cluster that backside in order to kill the command. So I bombs away and then I was strafing the SU-25 as well. Very cool. Since these were flying off the map, they're relatively okay. But SU-27 does come in to try and shoot us down. Plenty of time, though, to get out. And yeah, we did end up killing the command that was like right at the back here, as you can see. So that did give us the sector back. But just as that happened, I believe the opponent counter-capped us on the right side. I'm going to be bringing in some bombs to try and kill the command that was brought in here but didn't really hit the mark unfortunately but the F-104s are going to get out alive which was quite surprising since I had no idea what sort of units there were here it could have easily been a lot of AA that I didn't know about and that would have just been a bunch of suicide bombs but most of my aircraft are relatively intact which is great did bring in another F-104 
This one's actually just going for the bombs onto the T-80 here since it's a little bit damaged already. Only one damage off from killing it. That would have been a really nice kill for that plane as well. So another big push coming in from Binder. He's going to be using the MTLBs here to kind of reveal the position of my units. I should have made sure that these were unloaded and attacked moving forwards, but I think at the time I was obviously focusing on the aircraft and I was trying to get these units into position. I was focusing on the left-hand side where I did end up losing my supply vehicle, which I should have retreated. Nice kill there, though, from my eye hawk. <laughs> really good kill. Now, the Jaegers do reveal them, uh, re redeem themselves by killing a lot of those MTLBs as they push forwards. But now there's two of these Osa AKMs here, and they're being led by a bunch of T-62s, so... In a bit of a weird spot, because I want to use the Gazelle to kill the T-62s, but with the Osas in position, it's going to be difficult to do so. So I've kind of got it close to the tree line here, so I can retreat it if needs be and get out of line of sight really quickly. But the other thing that I've got to do is try and use the... Aeromobiles to take these out now. And since they have the Apalas, they have a decent chance to kill them in one shot. Because these T62Ms only have 10 front armor. And with 21 AP, we should be able to just one, one shot them. But yeah, they're going to miss. Also, a lot of these HGMs from the Hot, too, missed as well. You saw them just landing next to the tank. It was really annoying. He's obviously just hunting right now for my command. My command actually unable to defend itself against the tanks because it has flash launcher. Flash launcher is anti-infantry with the incendiary rocket launcher. So it's really up to these Jaegers and the Aeromobiles to get the job done. But the Aeromobiles, as I mentioned earlier, have a limited amount of rockets. And the Jaegers, they have short range of ro rockets. Like 705 is like slightly shorter range than the 885. And also, this only has 14 penetrations, so I've got to get side shots ready for this to be effective. My last Apalas shot missed the mark because he smoked off his tank. We're still sitting on the plus two, and we had a plus four for a while, uh, which was really good. But now artillery coming in. I can't actually see this artillery because it's like just off the ridge. There wasn't really much I could have done about that anyway, unless I had like the cannon and Jagdpanz up there, or like an M48. I guess maybe I could have bombed them, but I've, I saw the two Osas in here earlier, so I can't really do that either. Now over on this right hand side, uh, I had a couple of gazelles here that I landed and got resupplied and then sent over to the right to help deal with the TATU, but he ended up moving up at Tunguska here, and that shot down two of them already, so the other one's going to have to retreat. But this is providing lots of nice recon information, at least, for the time being. Anyway, the T-62 eventually going to be finding my Green Beret leader. I only have, like, these Jaegers for AT, and I'm going to have to get them over there ASAP. I don't think I noticed this happening for a little while. You can see I've only just started to react to that. I even sent my pioneers over. And these can't even attack a T-62, but they're good distraction at least. It's just really up to the Ingus right now to get the job done. But only three damage in the front harbor there, as you can see. And now also, there's a bunch of BMP-2s arriving. So those pioneers are very dead. And my Jaegers have now officially used up all of their AT. So I have no AT left for any of those BMP-2s. It's pretty inevitable now that I'm going to end up losing that leader. So I just kind of leave it in there for as long as I can in order to maintain that plus two. Because I'm getting very, very thin on the front line here, as you can see. And on the right, my Gazelle Hots just really didn't do the job. My recon ended up getting popped by the T-80 as the enemy recon moved forwards. But I do have a lot of aircraft, so it's going to turn into the air show as I start to target in my F-111F with the GBU-10s. These guided bombs don't really work as intended just yet. 
kind of just work like normal dumb fire bombs at the moment. But they're still pretty strong. My, these two didn't actually drop their bombs. The cluster munition did drop its bombs, but it kind of missed, I believe. So it was all a bit of a mess. And then this Mirage comes in afterwards, late. I have no idea why. But the Ose is going to be smacking that out the sky nice and easy. But in the meantime, most of my stuff's already dead, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate. And with five seconds left on the clock, it's very, very close on the score. And that means it's going to be a draw. So, yeah, a full 40-minute game. Very, very close. We nearly got there with the win, but not quite. It was very, very difficult to kind of manage that push through the trees. And at the time when he pushed me back with the MI-24s, that was a pretty crucial moment because it would have allowed me, if he hadn't have done that, to get the command in there sooner. And then I would have been in a much better position score-wise by the end of the game. But 7,318 kills to 6,255 losses in the end. If we jump into the kills and losses, the AMX 10 RC is a really big fan of these units, uh, but I did kind of waste them, I feel. Like they, yeah, they killed off a lot of like these BTRs and UAZs and stuff, but I let them get killed by like silly things. Like these, these AMX 10s can really punch above their weight. They're quite cheap. And you can get some really good kills. Like, they would have been fantastic for dealing with the T-62s from cover. Aeromobiles doing well there on the right-hand side for a while. Also had the Cannon and Yag Panzers, which were able to pick off a lot of units, particularly helping out with the producers early on, which was really nice. Uh, Jaegers getting loads of kills. This is mainly due to me retreating them from engagements and then fixing them up and then sending them back into engagements. Uh, F4Fs crucial in taking out these MI24s that were causing me problems and the IHawk managed to take out one as well. Uh, the P4 Milans, they were very very crucial for controlling the open ground against the T62s. If I was up against a lot of T80s in the open it would have been really difficult for me to hold my ground but up against the 39th I think it's quite a favorable matchup for this division. It wasn't too bad. Uh, but that Modestraki getting quite a lot of kills. The Barusa, this was the one that stayed alive for a very long time that kept like moving out of the cover and got missed by the M48 and the cannon and the Jagdpanzer. Like, it managed to kill like a couple uh, Gazelle cannons and cost me two of the F4Fs. So not killing that sooner and being unlucky with getting the shots on target was kind of sad. And then you can see how much damage the MO24s did, cleaning up all of the aeromobiles and the Jäger Alfklader in the forest, plus all of the M48s that I had in the open. Uh, this one again, killing all of the uh, Cannon and Jagdpanzers uh, that I was using to support those aeromobiles. It was really bad. Um, the MiG-23 MF, the bombing strike, took out the M48 and the two Jägers. And then... Mormon Straki getting lots of kills onto the M113s, on but nothing too crazy there. Then the T62 push came in, and I wasn't really quite ready for that, but we contained it. And then on the right, the Tunguska taking out two of my Hot 2s and my F104 towards the end. But yeah, by the end there, like I should have already made the ground in the middle, really, and that was the primary objective. I just kind of failed to accomplish it in time. Uh, but a really, really fun game, a really tense and uh, enjoyable game, which really showed off the strengths and weaknesses, I think, of this division, the Territorial Commander Sud. It's a, it's a fun division. I, I, think, I, I think I really, really like the two latest divisions a lot, um, but they do really struggle on a lot of the open field maps. But that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.